dodge more damage as well as take out all, all the uh, carries. Yeah. So it's an interesting little dynamic there. Well, it looks like actually it's going to be Skyland actually banning away the Kale in this one. So that makes me want to think Zed just because he plays Kale himself, and I'd be surprised if you ban your own champion. So I feel like they're banning a counterpick there. There's the Kha'Zix banned out as well. So five mid laners gone. First pick, Elise going to come through here for NK Inc. He's going to like this one. And we'll see where Cloud9 Tempest goes. Yeah, both of these games, he's gotten one of the top two junglers. I mean, Vi still is available, though, so now it's up to Cloud9. Are they going to want to pick that one up? If they do the same thing, Leona Vi lock in like there's the <laughs> same exact engage. No Akali to clean up, but still something else here. And already Skyline, definitely a new strategy. I feel like Vi was kind of integral to that whole lineup. Elise is not going to pull out the same kind oh, of Oh, yeah, S SKL. Yeah, Skyline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely going to run something different, so we'll see what else is in this sort of strat pool of theirs, not just champion pool, but strategic pool. Leona still the hover. I like that pick, actually. I think it's a strong choice overall. You know something about NK? If, mm -hmm. if he is taking this Elise into the jungle, NK, when he was on Velocity, one of the strategies that actually got them into the LCS was his jungle Ezreal. Right. Jungle Ezreal that would come shove early turrets. Elise, also range, also very good at shoving early turrets, he could take the jungle Elise, come take some early turrets, um, and knock down some global gold that way. Because Elise, like, she's almost even better than Ezreal at taking down the turrets. Because in human form, she can harass you under turret, get you low enough. And then when you leave, she'll go into spider form and get the attack speed buff yeah. to take it down really fast. Yeah, and the spiderlings will take turret shots, a whole bunch of fun stuff there. So it is going to be the Leona lock-in here for Cloud9 Tempest, the Gragas. Again, for Bijou, they're putting the trust in that one, saying with a Kali gone, you'll feel better here. <laughs> Skyline, meanwhile, going for some similar looks and some different looks. The Lulu support coming in now as well for Eveniscus does play her a lot on live, but Impactful still maybe liking the Sivir here. Hmm. So Lulu is one that can actually shove in Leona pretty good. You know, yeah. Glitterlance starting out, it's one of Lulu's uh, biggest pros there to having that support. And that with a Sivir... Both of them have really good wave clear. She can either start Ricochet or Boomerang Blade. A lot of them will just start Ricochet. Ricochet plus Glitter Lance, just obliterate the first wave, oh, and yeah. then try and keep your opponent shoved up so that they won't take advantage of uh, your lack of range. And that might work really well for these guys. Cloud9 Tempest, actually, they see the picks and say, okay, we'll grab the Vi happily, so a pretty similar diving ability team. But Lucian picked up now as a different AD carry to beat up on Sivir. I still feel like it's a good lane for Lucian. Mm -hmm but a, a different way of fighting for this guy. It's definitely a kill lane here. Leon Lucian, hard, fast kill lane. They're definitely going to be looking uh, for those opportunities. And especially if you have a jungler like Vi, she can easily answer Elise. So that'll be a really interesting matchup down there at bottom. But we did see the Gragas and Vi combo for TSM. Man, they crushed Hotshot oh, in the mid lane. So if, if they try and do that and actually get Bishu ahead this time, then maybe we could see how the game will turn out when Bishu gets to be the one uh, sort of orchestrating where the game goes instead of Golden Glue making his roam with Kali. Well, let's see what uh, Golden Glue goes for here. Does lock in Katarina and Renekton. So still the reset focused mid laner. You didn't ban them all. Akali and Kali are gone. Katarina's still here. And now with the blind pick Renekton, Cloud9, Tempest waiting for their top lane counter pick. They're going to get it here. And they're looking at Shivana to try to hold on against Renekton and make it to late game. Interesting, because I thought the Shen, like, Held up pretty yeah. well in CS versus the Renekton, um, and then was also able to offer shields for the rest of his team. So it seemed like a good answer to the Renekton, with Shivana having a little bit less damage this patch. Still, she's able to um, sort of handle the early, like nobody can actually handle the early Renekton, but she <laughs> could sort of, sort of handle it. Yeah. Jesse held up pretty well, like minus yeah. three CS yeah, yeah. made at a landing phase. Like that's... That's good. Like, that's a good score. If you're like, oh, I'm not losing hard. Oh, good job. You totally won lane. Yeah, it's <laughs> Katarina, we'll though. Anytime mm -hmm. you have a Katarina composition, uh, got to watch out for your squishies. Uh, yeah. So Altec, once again, is going to have to be uh, watching his backside here because they don't want to give him any sort of resets. No. You know, there's actually a team I saw with Katarina that I really liked back in the middle of, I want to say, Season 2. Uh, TSM would run uh, Leona Darius Katarina and would just, like, hard engage fights and someone would get a reset and carry it. And it was really fun to watch. Not the case here, but still kind of interesting. Uh, that is going to be the Shivana picked up here for Cloud9 Tempest. You see the lineups on your screen. Kobe, what speaks to you? Mm, again, I'm going to be looking for the early movements from Vi. Where's, where's he going to spend those ultimates? Because if he can get Bishu 
um, a good foothold in his lane, then Gragas, he can be the one in, tro in control uh, and start roaming around. Mm -hmm. You gotta figure, Bishu, you'd think he'd like this matchup here. Both times, first, like, early pick the Gragas, first rotation for Cloud9, both games. Yeah. Uh, both times, of course, the counter pick potentially uh, for Golden Glue. First time it worked. Akali won the lane, won team fights, all kinds of fun stuff. Katarina, I wanna see if he has similar success. We just don't see her very much. The only cat we've well, seen was Scara's, and they lost. She's not a lane bully, that's for sure. Yeah, no. Uh, she's, if she's going to get the early lead this time, it's got to be from the jungle, or else something is really wrong in that matchup. Well, maybe it's going to be NK Inc. making it happen. He is Elise, after all, the most sought-after jungler in the competitive scene right now. We're seeing him move on across their lanes. Let's ah, this one. so this time around, the Leona does have a Targon here. So Glebe... Okay. When he's going for Leona, he is looking for that early shove, and they do want to play that Lucian lane as the kill lane. Well, we'll see if they can find it. These guys are fanning out early on. And Sivir, once again, actually, it's, it's Bishu and Impactful uh, doing the recall spam in the middle of the lane. It's actually the same champions last time, too, so this is a very familiar dance for these two. I like the sending your AD carry to go do it, just because... Um, then they're not quite sure where your solo lane is. And That's true. And you could pull a uh, tricky little switch there. But even if you're not going to do it, and I still kind of like throwing the AD carry there instead. I like it. Ten warding totems also, the initial opening. We d we definitely see mostly uh, yellow trinkets for these guys. There was a team, it was a Korean team, I forget which one, opened, I want to say, three or four sweeping lenses okay. at level one. Uh, I don't remember hearing about it. I didn't see the game, but I thought it was a really interesting choice. It's a really use, like, useless anecdote. I was like, this happened once. I was like, thanks, Freak. You know, it would be a useful anecdote if you had seen you someone by the orb. If someone starts a blue trinket, mm -hmm. then you can let me know. Okay. Please, because I want to. <laughs> Tell you I what. I really want that to be a thing. Here's what I'm going to do. Every game I play on live, I'm going to buy a blue trinket okay. and then undo and buy a yellow one. Okay. And so every game I'll have bought a blue trinket. I mean, it's the blue trinket. It's actually a good comeback tool because then you don't have to face check stuff when, when your team is down and and you have to get some vision on Baron. Mm -hmm. You don't have to walk over to the wall where a lot of teams will catch you. So it is the idea is good. It just needs Oof. a little buff. Hypnosis taking some damage. It's all right. Pix helps a little bit. And, and there it the is. Shove. The Glitter Lance and Ricochet shove. Uh, let's see who gets the minions first there. Looks like the melees are starting to be available here for Gleave. He's going to find one. But the, the shove already way faster here for Skyline. They're trading with the minions pretty quickly, but Impactful missing like all those minions. He got he got the melees at least. Yeah, the shove almost worth, I guess. <laughs> at least it's end of the turret. We'll see if they miss any. Looks like uh, five CS. It's all six CS. The shove didn't do anything except get the experience first. Hmm, something else is uh, you have to be careful about using both your Targon charges early because you want to save them for the cannon minions. You, you get, get so it. much more value out of the cannon minion being shared between both people. Uh, you, get, you actually need to be careful with those and probably only want to use it your last one if you're going to need that help. You really need the heal from it. Yeah, I've actually been playing a lot with uh, a Targon support recently, and you can actually get the first wave, both melees. It'll come up in time for the for the cannon. The second cannon, you have to store for. Yeah, you okay, so you got to burn the first two melee creeps to get it back up in time. Okay. Yeah. This time he should have it. The thing is, he did kill that wave a little bit late. Maybe he doesn't have the charges up, but should be blue over here. There it is. Yes! Orange Sphere. He's got the Targon sealed up. Cannon's theirs. All right, so the mini game here. Can he get to the cannon without taking a whole bunch of harass? <laughs> Looks like with it shoved up this far, you know, he, he may take a couple auto attacks, but... Oh, that's a good move. Scare him off of it. Wait for it to get low, and then he sec secures, secures Cash the money. gold. 40 plus 45 gold. There you go. Targon's making the money happen. Now he's got to save it. He's got to save his charges now for the very next cannon. The junglers, in a minute and a half. junglers just passed each other, came opposite ways down the river here. They did not see because one came out as the other one is going in. Okay, here we go. Turret's going to be uh, pushed up against. Uh, i got to say, though, Skyline, for how rough uh, their lane was before, uh, another sort of blind-picked uh, lane for the most part, and they're doing a lot better. They're not nearly losing as hard. Well, you have to count the CS here from the Targon, and they're definitely making a lot of gold down there. Bishu Ooh. gets stunned up and has to burn his flash early in the game. Good play by Golden Blue, managing to block the body slam, forcing the flash away. Good early gank in here by NK Inc. And now that lane is very pressured. Kaz likely to spend a lot of his time near mid to help counter gank that if something goes wrong. 
Golden Glue has already had to use his potion, though. Um, like we said, Katal Katarina, not the strongest of early lane phases. Yeah, holding okay in minions, 18 to 22, not that horrible, all things considered. Shield unimpactful, not really sure why. It's fine, it's gonna time out, not a big deal. Uh, this lane holding fairly close to equal. The top lane actually, 25 to 20, is pretty close as well, to be completely fair. Uh, small lead for Renekton, I guess to be expected somewhat. He has to keep more or less holding on. Also, uh, Jezzy up here has used, he used his Trinket Ward a bit late. You know, mm. saved it for the Tribush instead of putting it in the river like we've seen a whole lot. So he was protected from that double buff game, and it only just ran out. Well, good stuff by these guys. Yazuki started to actually get some control, some agency over this lane, uh, pushing it in towards Jesse's turret, giving him some space. But I feel like it's just going to be reacted to catching some farm here. Yeah, by using his burnout there, he was able to shove the lane, but he missed a couple of those last hits. So he's doing his best to push up the lane at the cost of some gold. All right. Okay, Ink lurking around. He knows there's no flash on Bishu for the next three minutes. It's a ping out here, though. They suspect some fishy activity. And Kez okay. might be the one being stalked. Okay, Ink, what's he going to look for here? Does not land any stuns. Kez gets out pretty safely. They know no gank's going to happen now in the mid lane. Jesse going to take these minions. He's all right here. Can't quite last hit the uh, the uh, casters yet, so he's got a. There we go. Okay, pretty clean right there. And now a 10 minion lead, actually. A 33% minion lead here in the top lane is actually pretty decent for Renekton. Looks like uh, Kez is going to try and farm very hard from his level 5 up to try and get 6 before he goes for that gank. Going to rely on the Assault and Battery to secure his target instead of wasting some more time here because he's already. Spent a lot of time just uh, just walking around the map. Yeah, and the ultis and ignites were also traded mid. NK Inc. Wow, the damage stuns up Bishu. Not gonna go for the ult. Ooh, good repel by NK Inc. That was close. Yeah, Bishu tried to fake him out by just walking away for a little bit there before throwing the ult. Um, but NK Inc. Jump onto impactful. Uh, actually, spell shields the stun. Getting chased on by Altec, but gets a whimsy. Does not land the hex at a good time though. Altec backing off and uh, gets a probably an advantageous damage trade. Yeah, it was a nice whimsy right there, turning him into a cupcake as soon as he dashed in. But with Impactful turning around, they were still able to come out ahead in the trade. And the Targons is really making the difference here as far mm -hmm. as gold for that bottom lane. Absolutely. And the, the Whiff Glitterlands definitely did not help that fight. What I meant to say instead of the uh, the whimsy there. About 150 gold missed, or 150 damage missed out right there. Impactful, though, happy to sit in this lane and not, not freezing it here. Trying to get rid of the minions rather quickly and unlock that lane a bit more. Yazuki, Jezzy, they, again, traded ultimates a little while ago, but not much happening to these guys anyway. So, if the game continues on the path that it's going right now, uh, really the excitement will only come from that level 6 Vi gang, and then the potential for the first drag. So, if Vi decides to gank either mid uh, lane here and trying to secure something for Bishu to get him rolling like we talked about mm -hmm. um, or come in around the, the side there for the bottom lane then he could make a play with Leona so there's really two good options for him around the dragon because both of those lanes have good CC to set up ganks nice. and and that would be their move to go for uh, an objective after a kill okay let's see what they do with this one then bottom lane just kind of chilling for now actually the first recall did come in impactful with the BF sword very happy for him and both these vital lanes have traded the recalls under this one. Yazuki still shoved around. Top laners still not yet looking for the re or, uh, for the movements around the map. These guys really just trading their gold. NK Ink grabbing his red buff as well. So we do wait for this dragon fight here. We do wait for what these guys are looking for. Yeah, I, it's definitely a, in NK's hand or in Kez's hands right now because um, he's got his flash and his ultimate. So. Those are two big cooldowns that should be burning a hole in his pocket. As soon as you get those, you definitely feel like you need to use them. Um, and there's not terrible ward coverage here. Mm -hmm. uh, he could even go for a, a lane gank if he really needed to, since Leona does have her combo now. Oh, nice. Yeah, and Evan, this is actually not six yet, so a bit of a, a level lead. The jungler, actually, Kez, is about half a level above NK Inc. as well. Hit seven first. NK still one camp away. If they time the dragon right, they've got a slightly stronger smite that might matter here. Pink ward coverage coming out as well. They're looking for this. That's a very popular pink ward spot yeah, uh, nowadays. 
See how long that one lasts. Two pink wards down already for C9. Um, one in that defensive position. I really like that ward, you know, up sort of by the bottom turret here, because it's going to last a very long time, because not that many people will roam there. But it will give this bottom lane the confidence that they aren't going to get uh, any dive action soon. No, no roaming from Golden Glue behind the turret. None yet, at least. See what these guys end up moving with this one. Golden Glue. I actually kind of like teleporting Katarina. He's going Ignite for the better one-on-one. -on -one, but I kind of think back to I like the most recent IPL. I guess the last IPL where Fnatic had a really good game over WE with a teleport Peke triple kill. Uh huh. And that was like just crazy. Like the turnaround from Katarina is just huge if you get a TP. But yeah, I feel like I feel like TP's strong in a lot of cases, but it's more risky because if you don't get that TP kill or mm -hmm. double kill or whatever to start it off, then you're not going to have the extra damage for finishing off your single target in team fights that Ignite brings, and you might not get that reset that you really need later. Uh, Jesse in a really bad spot. Goes for the damage. Ignite on Yazuki might just be enough damage. Nope, last tick. Not going to pick up Yazuki. Ooh, so close right there. Burned his flash and didn't get much for it. But it's going to be an attempt on Dragon, so worth it for Skyline. Yeah, definitely. Jezzy does a good job right there. He basically makes himself a martyr. He pushes all the way behind the turret, thereby drawing out the Vi ultimate that we talked up so heavily. With that down and with and, and with Kez up top, very good, easy call here from Skyline to go grab the Dragon. Uh, so they get the objective instead of First Blood. And Jezzy cashes in his lane lead for a Sunfire Cape, though it's likely to be Ooh. there. Wow, close one right there. Golden Blue does survive that one, but does drop low. Lucian ult gets rid of the minion's bottom lane, so no, no turret pressure allowed. But Shivana got a recall as well. So these top laners about to change their game plan around a little bit with Sunfire Capes done on both these guys. Yeah, and this time around, without the sneaky Okali pick mm -hmm. uh, that Cloud9 must not have expected there, Bishu's definitely doing fine in his lane. He's actually doing really well against Katarina, as expected. Yeah. Um, able to bully her around because, uh, you know, her early phase not that bad. Okay. So, actually, despite the dragon as well, Skyline behind in gold here. You talk about the Relic Shield a couple of times, and it's definitely an important factor here. It's a more invisible lane win, but certainly a line, lane win so far here for Cloud9 Tempest. Just now, Gold Pretend getting picked up here yeah. by Aveniscus. Well, you gotta, you gotta think. It's not only is it the doubled CS of Leona, so there's 30 CS basically there, but most of those CS are the cannon minions that they've been focused. So those are mm -hmm. worth a lot more than a lot of the, uh, you know, smaller minions. So yeah. that plus the Bishu. CS lead is doing a lot for Cloud9. And Yazuki now with a close score in minions, but a, a first blood 400 gold bonus. Really helping him out here. Kaz looking for some help in the bottom lane. Not going to find too much here just yet. But this is starting to look a I'd, lot better. For if I was him, I'd definitely stick around here because his assault and battery is almost backed up. And uh, even though Gleeb doesn't have the Leona ultimate, mm -hmm. he still has a lot of playmaking potential as they get shoved into turret. <laughs> we'll see what they can find with this one. Top lane is going to be the location of choice for Katarina. Does get pinged out, I believe, but looking for this top lane, I don't know how likely this is to succeed, though. They're against a very tanky Shivana, and yeah, that doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, ultimate's up, and since Katarina coming down the river here gets seen on the exit of his path, so Mishu aware that he was up top and trying to shove the lane as quickly as possible. Ooh, nice attempt right there by NK. Doesn't find the CC, though, so Bishu... Pretty easy to rotate on this one. Golden Blue sweeping away some of the minions. Loses zero. Wow, nice. So once again, Cloud9 with the nice start. But we'll still have to see um, the first team fight here from SKL. Because last time when they got a good engage, they were able to snowball that into a huge lead and eventual victory. This time around, though, it's going to be a lot more difficult. Because they don't have guaranteed engage. They're going to have to rely on a landed cocoon. Besides that, there's not very much hard CC here uh, without Renekton going super deep and, and making use of his melee stun. We'll see if they can find something. They're not doing anything yet. Skyline actually a much slower game here, which is unfortunate for them because they're not winning the landing phase in the first place here. These two happy to keep farming, taking away rates, having a good time, uh, I guess zone rates, but having a good time gaining gold right here. And the game being slow, I know it was kind of the true was true last time, but really more so this time as well. Cloud9 Tempest happy to play a slower game, continue to accrue uh -oh. an advantage. Leona getting caught up. Several T pop. There's the re-engage coming through. Spellshield's gonna block the ulti, but here comes Kez. 
knockdown from Evidence is onto himself, but the Illusion is there to deal some damage. Now Pen, Skyline, who's one around, Kez, very low, running away, Ignite is on, kill picks up, reset for Katarina. Altec not in a good spot, stun on a Golden Blue. Ricochet, I believe, is going to be available soon, but doesn't find much else to do. Q doesn't do much, this turret though, very low. Three members here in the area to try and defend, but you're right, it's only a couple of hits on the turret, so probably going to go down. Oh, Bishu waiting on the pink ward. Uh-oh, Bishu gets jumped on, and there's the reset. Golden Blue finding one. Deep Largo jumps on now as well, and this Finn comes across doing a lot of damage from Katarina. Bishu now, not a lot of places to go. Does not have Flash, will body slam the wall, and doesn't get stunned in time. Cloud9 Tempest loses another kill and the turret, and Jezzy rotated mid. So we talked about how they are lacking, you know, a lot of hard CC, but that was all basically catching Gleeb Garbu out and then slowly members of Cloud9 trickling in. They didn't have to make use of the hard CC and they were able to just pull Chase with some Katarina resets. Oh, well played, but these guys impactful. Tanking a little bit of this mid turret. They're going to trade these actually, but the top lane turret did get solo pushed by Yazuki. So two to one now, but the mid lane turret, the hardest one to kill, has been grabbed. However, no one's stopping Shivana. She's down to tier two so far. She's still doing some pretty good work on that turret. You're right, nobody's even getting really close, and it's so early in the game. People don't even have level one boots, some of them. Uh, yeah. Much less home guards, so that's not going to be something Yuzuki has to worry about very quickly here. And he can take not only another wave behind that turret, but even go into the jungle here and start some counter jungle action. Okay, so a lot of gold kind of just draining out of Skyline's pockets right here, trying to get this top lane in a little bit of a better spot. But I gotta say, a lot of good stuff by Yazuki to set this all up. Golden Glue still sweeping away mid. Has accrued a bit of a CS deficit, but has done a much better job in fights. Yeah, he's g after that last set of fights down there, it's enabled him to pick up that needlessly large rod. So it's a huge boost for him. He's got the dual penetration build here uh, with both the, the Sork Boots and the Haunting Guys backed up by some AP now. So he's definitely packing a punch. Only problem for him is that there's a lot of CC answers on Cloud9. This really team, are. pretty much everybody here, except for Lucian, is going to be able to stop him. Ah, Death is the best CC. They've all got the opportunity to okay, move the Katarina ult. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And I'm actually curious what uh, item Golden Glue goes for. Death Cap, Death Fire Grass, wow, or Zonia's. Wow, the Dragon, though. Okay, Dragon is getting started. All five here. Pick up! Nice steal right there. And the fight has begun. Knock up there from Lulu. Will the damage come across enough in time? Kez is going to go down. Yasuki around. Golden Lulu stays alive. Peter doesn't find the damage. He missed the ultimate. And now the re-engage is here. Again, five versus four. Oh. The chase onto Alta. Can he go down? Yes, Jezzy finds that. Now Gleeb, Yasuki, and Bishu all running away. Jezzy zoning out one. NK chasing the rest. Does not find the jump over the wall. No, there's the repel. Does he have the damage? Yes, he does. Impactful finds it. Five to two for the dragon. And SKL, Skyline are able to use the dragon pit actually to their advantage. Usually, being trapped in the dragon pit against the Gragas is a terrible thing because he can AoE you, but the barrel just barely missing Golden Glue there. Yeah. The outside radius is a little bit uh, bigger, and he was able to channel his ultimate on both Vi and Shivana there, forcing them to actually run out, while Jezz was able to screen the back line and and disallow the damage from joining the fight. Just very well played by Skyline right here around that Dragon Pit, even though it mm -hmm. was stolen away by Kez. And I like the timing by Skyline here. Every single fight we've seen around the 18 minute mark, these mid-game team fights, the AD carries have a rough time against the top laners. Mm -hmm. We saw that when Impactful had to run away from Yazuki and Saver versus uh, Shivana, and also here with Alltech running away from Jezzy's Renekton having a bad time there as well. The difference being that Impactful Presses R and helps the entire team, and then it says, screw it, I'm going to kite, which works a lot better. If neither AD carry is going to do much damage, well, one brings more utility. Well, Altec tried to press R and run away, but yeah. uh, the flash from Jezzy actually got behind his calling there at the end. <laughs> Cut him down from the back. Pretty good play. So Spirit Visage, the next item it looks like from Jezzy, still scaling up as a scary Renekton man. Eveniscus in a bad spot, ulted around. That is a very likely, oh my god, the flash. Will Eveniscus even live through this? <gasps> You're kidding me. Wow, Eveniscus. Changing his ways from the LCS, not dying nearly as much this time around. That's, that's two really big ultis down for Cloud9, but he ended up burning his Lulu ult at the end there too. And now they're shoving onto this turret, but a collapse from Skyline. Okay, they're going to join this fight before the turret goes down. Yasuki down to about two-thirds. Kez joining the battle. Golden Blue 
kind of towards the back line, but right oh. in this battle, these guys trading blows a lot right here. Impactful pops the ulti. His team is going to chase down. Kez flashes away. Where's the chase going to go? NK Inc. looking for the kill onto Vi. Jezzy getting jumped on, though. He is going to go down one for one, but the reset is here for Katarina. Can they chase? Can they find more damage? Does not land a cocoon, though. That might slow down Skyline. Just a one for one trade. Jezzy has repeatedly put himself on the front line so that the rest of his team can focus on protecting the back there. And he's, he keeps... He keeps going down for it, but it's definitely it's definitely a good play by him, and it's definitely worth it. He's been he's been able to buy his team time over and over again, but the last kill barely putting uh, Cloud Nine back up in here. Yeah, One hundred really, gold. One hundred gold. This game is very, 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 very close. Gotta say it's a pretty impressive one overall, and. One thing I do want to point out is Impactful having a very different game from last time. So, very first game, he was like pure support, 1-1-9 one, one, and nine to start the game out, just like letting Akali pick up all the kills. This time around, uh, this Sivir is a much bigger threat relatively in team fights. 3-0-2, and two, he's... He, I mean, especially getting less pooped on and landing a part of that. <laughs> less pooped on is my is my G-rated version of that one. Um, but overall, like, having a much better time. Katarina, he's actually, you know, having a bit of a hard time killing the frontliners herself. So a lot of that I have to give credit to the support change there. Picking up Lulu instead enabled them to start that combo of Glitter Lance Ricochet that we talked about. And from then on, you know, they really got off on the right foot and uh, were able to have a much better hold on the bottom lane than before. So two items completed for the Skyline AD carry. Looks like it is going to be Zonia's Hourglass here for Golden Glue. It's going to be his uh, needlessly large rod item of choice. I have seen DFG. You get the first kill really fast. But going a bit more defensive, relying on his team a bit more here. NK Inc. 003 on Elise has made some things happen in this early game. Sweeping Trinkets coming around, also helping Cloud9 Tempest remove some wards. And now we've got a bit of a lull here. Once again, Skyline not a good siege team, and they're waiting for objectives. Yeah, that's pretty funny that you point out uh, two ways you can go with needlessly large rod on Katarina. The first one, as you pointed out, going for the Zanyas, you just use Zanyas and wait for your team to get you the reset after you jump in, mm -hmm. or you go Deathfire and you get that reset yourself oh, yeah. by <laughs> amplifying your damage. He's got. It looks like he is going more for the wait for my team to do a little something, and uh, I'll come out of my Zanyas with the reset. But you're right. Again, short range here because they've decided once again to go with Sivir and Sivir's strength is in her mobility and movements around the map, able to catch those team fights when they find good opportunities rather than sieging up. So they're not really the ones to start those 5 vs 5 sieges. They're, they're always sort of trying to defend them, whereas Cloud9 could be looking for a dive because they have so much hard engage. Uh, 5 vs 4, Cloud9 is happy to take his mid lane turret down. Cattleman is still on the split push bottom and gets nothing for it. So. Turret goes down in the mid lane. For all the sort of praises I'm singing of Skyline, you gotta remember C9G, they're actually winning in gold right now. Two to two in turrets, they've got a couple dragons in their name, and they're up about eighteen hundred or eight hundred gold, almost a thousand gold right here. But it just so still many looks... pink wards for them to clear out. Oh That's, man. It's almost too many auto attacks to spare time for. Dragons up in ten seconds right here. Pink ward is there, C9G happy to clear that one away. Jezzy forced back, and it looks like Skyline actually right now split up with three seconds. Cat's on the wrong side of this fight. Which way are they going to go? They should swing down to the bottom and come up from where Renekton is because they actually have better vision from that side. Whereas this top side, they could easily get engaged on. Remember, Cloud9, you have to keep your eyes out for not only the Leona Solar Flare, but also Vi's engage and Bishu's ulti. If Bishu can split this team up, then it should be a much easier time for Cloud9. Well, Skyline looking for this one. Actually, Bishu is separated from the team. They all back up because of this one. Some damage coming across. Pink Ward getting swept away. Skyline are standing on a ward and have no way of killing this one right now. So Cloud9 Tempest knows about this. Renekton hiding off on the side, and they ping the mid lane turret. Someone's going to shove this. It's, it's starting to push in Skyline's favor, but it's going really slow. Definitely slowly. Some poke coming across from these guys. Inca Ink aggroing the dragon again. And Jezzy just goes in for this one. Impactful looking for the fight. Uh, Sivir's going to actually block away the uh, ulti. And here comes the battle. Jezzy just in the back line, taking up all the damage. They're trading back. Kez goes down. Yatsuki in the back line. One for one, two for one so far. Good fight for Cloud9. Tempest pushing everyone back. Impactful. Good flash by Evanesis, but still not in a great spot. Looks like that was just a huge fight for Cloud9. Tempest still forcing the back line away. Impactful still trying to run. Will make it out, but now control is here for C9T. 
So this time around, Cloud9 were actually able to melt the tank faster than Skyline were. You know, Jezzy, like we said, he keeps on trying to get to the back line and screen out all the damage of Cloud9. They actually took him out so quick this time that uh, there was only time here for Skyline to grab one. All right, so very impressive stuff so far with these guys. A fairly close game overall, and it just seems like the strategic power uh, a little bit weaker this time around uh, from Skyline. We are, by the way, in a positive game right there, which is why you're seeing us and not the players or, and their champions, but Sorry we're about getting that. into that soon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so this time around, they don't have the hard engage that they had last time, no. and they also don't have the Akali that had a super good laning phase, which is always something that's amazing to have on your team. Yeah, and with a really defensive sort of, like, Katarina build, she's having a pretty hard time killing off Kaz and Yazuki. Uh, the prior dragon fight, right, Katarina in the back line, got a pretty much a full spin, Kez dropped, uh, and then they got to kind of push forward and clean up, and Skyline had a really good time here. This one, Jezzy died before any of the frontliners from Cloud9 Tempest did. Katarina's kind of sat there spinning, but, like, really not hitting that hard overall. Yeah, they need to build more for tank melting, because they have to work through two real strong tanks, with the Vi and the Shivana that keep on jumping back there. Whereas... We only have Renekton for, for Skyline, who's trying to do the same thing, and it's not working out quite so well for him because he does fall off uh, in tankiness towards the late game compared to those other champions that get the uh, resistances as opposed to fat health. Yeah, and so we're seeing these guys kind of continue to move forward. Of course, the AD carries just started to build, uh, get farther along in their build. So we had Bloodthirster Phantom Dancer already done for Impactful. Last Whisper is next up, but doesn't have it yet. So That'll right, help. He, yeah, it'll help, but he can't yet get rid of Kaz and Yazuki. Meanwhile, Trinity Force was very close to done here. So a similar situation where Last Whisper is coming up soon by the AD carry, uh -huh. uh, by Alltech here on, uh, on Cloud9 Tempest. But the, the power hasn't swung to the AD carries yet. Tanks are still very beefy, very hard to get rid of, um, unless you're alone, like Jezzy, in which case you just get 3v1 to go down. Yeah, and I'm interested to see if they actually switch their strategy, because right now, same strategy for both teams. Front lines, dive the back line, see who kills the tanks first. Yeah. Um, the first team that switches to try and peel for my back line might see some more success. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing is you can't peel Vi. Because no. she gets a guarantee. She engaged. will get there. So 100% of the time. It's rough. Yeah, it's going to be a bit difficult. We are back into the game, though, guys. The dragon, of course, did go Cloud9 Tempest way. 2,500 gold now puts them ahead. A great fight by these guys. Yes, he got the turret gold. That was good. Didn't leave too soon. Impactful getting top lane. These guys trading objectives. We're just here three turrets to three. A very close game, but something that Cloud9 Tempest has been controlling. Seems to be towards the end game. Uh, whichever team is in control of better CC are the ones that are able to make the easier plays. So if it stays true here, Cloud9, with their early lead here, should be able to dictate the next uh, objective fight, which will be um, you know, either around Baron or they're going to have to wait for another dragon to come up. Well, it's going to be a good five minutes away. Right now, just a like holding pattern for Skyland, and and such such less threat in the last game right here. The definitely the, the power in different hands right here until Katarina really activates. Just not that big of a threat overall. Uh, the last whisper nearly done for Impactful should be in a bit of a better spot. Bishu is still doing pretty well as well. Actually, won his lane this time. 205 minions, pretty good impact in team fights. The finish Death Cap being really big for him, like. I don't know, man. The power is in the right places, I feel like, on Cloud9 right now. And Skyland have some catching up to do, like, even still. Yeah, it does it does look pretty good for Cloud9 right now. Uh, but we have seen Skyline come back already. Now, they're trying to head off this split-pushing Shivana. See if there'll be some interesting antics down there. She yeah. does have one jump available to her, mm -hmm. but Shivana... Um, I don't know. We'll have to see if she can get out of this one. She's deep in enemy territory. She, she's sitting Tune desk. in and find out next <laughs> on the in North American desk. Challenger League. Yeah, again, guys, sorry for a quick pause right there. I, it, it's funny, actually, because Shivana is kind of singed desk. And when you think about it, right, pops the ulti, bonus armor and MR, uh, bonus move speed with her burnout on, and then also leaves behind a nice trail of fire. <laughs> She basically that tells you where she's going exactly. or where she went. Yeah, yeah, but basically becomes singed. And as you know, in League of Legends, you do not chase singed. It's a bad idea. It won't go well for you. 
Uh, and I've seen a lot of crazy things happen from these harebrained chases where you run around catching a top laner and the, mm -hmm. the theme plays in the background as you're trying to catch up to them and then your team does something else. Jesse did that with the dragon uh, earlier on, right? Di dove super hard as connected top lane, forced the jungler up there on a really, I mean, obvious dive, but still did it. Got a dragon for it. Um, I think is there's nothing up for Cloud and Heavens to do. So Shivana's just kind of like alone pushing. Yeah, that's the thing. When we talk about split pushing, you have to have not only the split pusher, but also the rest of your team showing on the map, at least getting something else accomplished, or else there's no pressure there. Mm -hmm. Because they'll obviously go after your, your single person if the rest of your team is not doing uh, you know, anything, not showing, not exactly. creating any pressure. Exactly. Dragon actually dead. Baron, pretty hard for these guys to do, though I guess they could if they had time in the ward control. <laughs> and all the outer turrets are gone. So there's not a lot for Cloud9 Tempest to look for without getting the minions pushed up, getting their team in position, and then starting it. And as the team with the lead and a team that actually can siege with Gragas and Lucian, I feel like that's the next play here for Cloud9 Tempest, that mm -hmm. they should be able to play the siege game and be much less afraid of Skyline's dive. Yeah, uh, there's not really a reason for them to have a split-pushing Shivana that doesn't have you know any sort of teleport or anything. They can group up right now because they're ahead. Make use of the Gragas ultimate, knock people away. Lucian, uh, culling under turrets is a really great tool. We'll have to see if they can actually uh, get into range. So here we go, guys. 26 minutes in. Shivana on the way around the map. Gets between the turrets, taking only one shot. Here we go. The hunt has started. Caught. I think he's fine. They let him go. Oh, well, that was unexciting. Woo! What an escape, Shivana. Flap your wings and out you go. She took like one tower hit. Yeah, there are no Dova in this it. game. Oh, well. It does look like they are going to group up for the Siege, though. Here we go. So, Gragas blue buff. This is perfect. He can keep on throwing the barrels under turret. And they can even set... Oh, they're going to set up a bush gank here. That's mean. MK Inc's going to say, hey, I saw you guys burrow in there. No Zergen by you guys. Cloud9 Tempest, though, just turn that into a top lane push. Vicious sweeps out the minions. And I think Skyland gets here just in time. But with a giant minion wave, they might rush this down. Jezzy wants the Whoa. battle. Look at this. Just goes for the minions. It doesn't really get punished for it. So what you have to rely on when you only have, you know, cocoons as your hard CC is flanking to start the engage if you want to go for it. And Jezzy right there already went the path that he would have. If the rest of his team was there, that could have been an engage. But nobody in position means they're just clearing out waves. And we're fighting in this jungle territory where they have limited vision. Here comes the dive. Great oh my by Bishu, impactful in a horrible spot right here. Trying to run away. Jumped on by Yazuki and is going to go down. That's one kill picked up overall. Let's see the rest of this one. Katarina, what can you do with this one? Run away is pretty much all you've got. Jezzy, he jumped on very low on health. Another kill picked up by Bishu. Two for zero. Make that three for zero. Cloud9 Temp is really dropping down Skyline right here. These guys are still running away. Can the rest of the members survive? Because their turrets sure aren't going to. Well, Bishu definitely helped out the tank line with that dive there. Landing yeah. his combo onto Impactful and just obliterating him. So when they can get down that AD carry, it's a real easy team fight to follow up. Now that they are five versus two, they can roam over to the Baron. Even though it's a lease, there's always uh, the possibility of a steal. There's so much CC here that they could just murder him as soon as he shows up. And Bishu has his ulti up in about 12 seconds right here. We'll see if he can knock back the Elise when this happened. Down to half HP, Katarina is around right here. Bishu, uh -oh. yep, he looks for Elise. Kez is low, does have Smite available. He's been he's done a and very Kez good job of smiting. And Kez got and he has a Smite. There's the Repel, goes into the air. They stop hitting Baron, oh picks my. it up. Nice job right there. Golden Glue likely to go down. And he's out. Fall. Oh, but Kez loses the Smite and getting out of the Baron pit and doesn't even get fa Oh, oh. Uh, and he gets a kill on top of it! Are you serious? Yes, he does! NK Inc. I wasn't sure at least had that much damage, but does right there. But there's Lucian. That's going to be a kill. So only three Baron buffs left, but that was freaking impressive. All right, we're back right, right back in Woo. this one here. Skyline, not only do they pick up Baron, and he trades uh, one kill there, but Jezzy has wasted no time shoving up the mid, so they get another objective in their pockets. A bunch of minutes for the bottom lane, but that's not going to turn into much right here. That's fine. They got at least something out of this one. Very nice turn of events here for Skyline, bringing the game back in. Still two and a half thousand gold, but whew, man, they they dodged a bullet with that one. NK there, flash is available, goes right in. Yeah, beautiful still. I mean, we've seen so many that I'm starting to 
to really question going for Baron at all, even if for the for the winning teams. And the thing is, Kez has has gotten most of the smite steals, I think. Like we had a very early dragon fight in this game where Kez just dove yeah, in exactly. and took it With off the screen. Vi. Yeah, again against Elise, right? The the invading team trying to take mm -hmm. it. You figure like, all right, well, Kez has been smiting well this game. Keep it up, and then, man, very impressive play here by NK Inc. And now the game is a little bit reset. You got a Leandri's Elise. You talked about killing front lines. You got a mage right there for the jungler, burning out the health. And I'm waiting to see actually what Golden Glue goes for, because that could be Leandri's, it could be Void Staff, it could be even DFG. So I like the early Leandri's from NK Inc. here because he's got a mid laner who does not need blue buff. So he'll be getting blue buffs and he can continually spam out uh, the, a the AoE damage spiders as well as targeted uh, human form cues to get the early burn down on uh, members of C9. So it's a pretty good pretty good build there, especially since uh, they're working with Katarina. You just get everybody softened up, mm -hmm. and then she can finish them off and go for the chain resets. Yeah, Katarina's got her Void Staff now. So that whole frontline killing thing just mm -hmm. turned around. No Aegis here. No, there is Aegis. I take it back. Leap Larbu has got a locket. So the AoE is going to be a bit weaker this time around. Uh, oh, come on, Bishu. There we go. Picks it up. Blue buff on that dragon. This okay, damage, so at least okay. won't get his own blue buff, but they're looking to trade here. Two versus two in that situation, and Sivir is actually on the wrong side. Uh, that's an easy pickup. Kez taking the blue as well with a smite, so Cloud9 Tempest loses Baron, but picks up both blues. That's going to be a nice little edge for them, but uh, right. Skyline using the Baron to push with one minute left on it. Consolation prize. Get the blue buff after uh, losing out the purple buff. Only member without purple buff will be NK, though, so he won't have the regen that I was just hyping up. Mm -hmm. And it seems like it'll still be a hard game for any sort of siege for Skyline, because they still don't have much of a range. Like, even if they get up to the turret, it'll probably be even NK um, with a greater probability of landing auto attacks onto the turret than Sivir. Yeah, Skyline right now also not sweeping away minions very well either. The Baron buff team doesn't find anywhere to push, finally now getting rid of minions around the map, but these guys are content to play it pretty slow, it seems, because they're, they're really not trying to rush anything down. Meanwhile, Golden Glue cannot take on the white. He just Great boss for something. His Zonus is down, and no one was around him a while ago. Yeah, he ran away from the white a while ago. Uh, he didn't have to, <laughs> have to use it on it. Uh, it's probably a fat finger. Maybe he wanted to take a picture down on the bottom side, summon his Rift. I mean, his name is Golden Glue. You figure, might as well turn himself golden. And, uh, and yeah, screenshot, whatever. <laughs> turn him a trophy. See what happens. 2,000 gold still separating these teams. Got honestly a very close game, and it feels like these guys have really slowed it down because Skyline, like, they used their one crazy awesome strategy, then got kind of banned out of it. And now they're like, okay, well, if their bag of tricks is really shallow, then like they really need this game here to try to close it out before they get figured out. Cloud9 Tempest, of course, need this game to stay alive. So these guys really risk averse right here in a very important game too. And so it's a these last few minutes have been very reserved. Shivana uh, just canceled a recall. Okay, so it make, looks like they are making the call to continue split push. Very interesting. Shivana's huge. Three completed items. Very much above Jezzy right here. Yeah, no attack item though. There's no Blade of the Ruin King there. So she's just a giant menace that wants to get in front of Impactful and keep Impactful's damage away from the rest of the team. Because usually Sivir's going to shred down your team like no other AD mm -hmm. carry. Very heavy AoE. But if Yuzuki can jump back there and get in his face, then he can basically focus all of Impactful's damage on himself and keep yeah. it away from the rest of his team. I guess you could say it wouldn't be very impactful then. <laughs> there we go. The team grouped up, though. Shivana, uh, scoring off against NK Inc. I like that choice, actually. Skyline send their jungler as the best suited person to defend against that. Not a ton of MR on Yazuki there. That might be okay for this Elise. Level 16 to 17. Not too bad for these guys. And the rest of the 4v4 is here. We're going to have to get Golden Freak statues for the uh, for the pun awards. Yes. I will take this from you, Crapo. Don't you dare try to outfund me. The only guy I see try to contest the throne. I won't allow it. Impactful blocking a bit of damage with the spell shield. So the culling is up as well. You know, Gragas has it, everything available to him. Lucian's got his calling up. 
they're not really making the push at this turret. They can push it pretty hard if they use both of those to clear out the wave while simultaneously doing some damage to this Skyline team. But they just have to pull the trigger here. See if they go for it. They're not just yet. Just some more poke coming off on both sides, really. Feels like Cloud9's waiting for things to respawn on the map just to have control over them when it does come time for this one. These guys trading wards down there. Mid lane, a big wave ready to push, but NK Inc. And he's getting all the flip push farm is the thing. NK is going to be a bigger and bigger threat throughout this game. He's getting top and mid lane farm as they come in. So Elise is mostly single target damage. Um, if he gets bigger and bigger... Oh! Golden Glue gets caught! Not good. Oh, the Zonia is going to help him out a heck of a lot as the oldies get burned across. Kez and Gleeb Larger, they're in the front line. Jesse going in hard. There's the spin. Gets most of it done right there. The battle's still coming across. All tech around. Evanesk is not in a good spot. Jesse also pretty bad right here. Yazuki joins the fight. A lot of numbers here for Cloud9 Timbers. They don't find much. Gleeb Larger gets Cocoon. Has to flash away. There's the damage coming across. Impactful. Finding able to shoot. Yazuki forced backwards. A lot of damage though. And the burnout's going to keep him alive. Wow, the trades and no one goes down. Now, the Golden Glue getting caught out there was almost a really good bait because he was able to Zanyas in time before they chain the CC, but it was still only three members of Skyline. So Jezzy kind of made the call to aggress anyway, even though it was three versus four, because they had the slight uh, positional advantage. Mm -hmm. Without the extra damage there, though, they couldn't actually make anything happen, and it was a good disengage actually by both teams not taking losses there. Well played on both sides. High level fight and everything. Riley has Crystal Scepter done for NK Inc. He's got that synergy there with the uh, Riley's Leandries. Some extra percent health burn. Not a ton of magic pen, but a decent amount. Uh, looks like Golden Glue is going Deathfire Grasp now. Has the Phoenix Codex, one of the key components of that item. And Infinity Edge, an item lead here done for Impactful. And I just got to say it Altec gets a blue trinket. All right, this game is going to go down to history here. Because <laughs> Altec heard me. I'm going to take credit for that one. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to I just want to say, if Cloud9 Tempus wins this game, we've got a 100% win record for Blue Trinket in televised LCS Challenger matches. So what this thing can do for them is they can check objectives from really far away. They can check all the bushes. So they don't have to worry about the uh, sneaky fanatic style uh, bush camp that will get um, Skyline back in this, since Skyline have to rely on picks, sort of, to get their kills uh, without the hard engage, you know. So, I don't know. I kind of like it here. I do, too. I really do, because the only way Alltech really dies here with this much awesome frontline appeal for him is if he gets caught out of nowhere. Here we go. Jump on to NK. Force a repel up. Dodges the Leona ulti, and not much from the Gragas one. Two ultis down for very little. Sivir burns hers, but doesn't find an engage here. Jesse always wants to fight. Even if the really rest of the does. team is running away, he's running head on. Those wow. ultimates spent that you just called out are means immediate Baron. Oh my god, that percentage Look how damage. fast it's going and no one's even checking because who would Baron at this point? Oh my gosh, picked up. Are you serious, Skyline? Picking up that and the blue ticket was still on cooldown. Man, he wish he bought that earlier. Great call. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you need you need the blue trinket. You need it faster you than it that. Sooner, because you can't. That's exactly the situation that you want it when you can't. You have no vision in Baron, and you need to check it without getting too close to the wall because the Skyline team can kill you over the wall. But wow. again, we have to shout out the shot caller for Skyline. Not quite sure uh, who it is. I think it might be NK because he did a lot of the calls there for Velocity. But he was able to rein in Jezzy. Uh oh, the fight is starting because no one is around actually to defend that turret. And it's going to be everyone kind of backed away. Shivana was actually still recalling from bottom. So Skyline getting control over this one. Still looking for Sieges elsewhere. Uh, five turrets, by the way, down for these guys. They've gotten more control over the map. The only tier two turret left is the bottom lane, which well, might just be where they go. They keep getting Barons, but they're behind at the point that they get Barons. So they're basically using the whole Baron both times just to get more gold lead back. So they get back to even. Then start losing again. Then get another Baron. Use it to get back to even. <laughs> then lose another fight. All right. So this time around, though, they should be able to get another turret. Um, they All the cooldowns are back up, though. So the hard engage from Cloud9, if they land their abilities, they can still turn this one around. Let's see what they get. Kez actually with the Banshees. I'm a little bit surprised at that because I don't know what he's trying to really block there. So actually just magic damage in general, um, which I guess, you know, with Katarina is probably worth it right there. Skyline. 
question mark? Sorry? <laughs> the cocoon? Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's just a good MR item in general, right? Like, you don't have to just buy so, vantage for the shield. You're right. With the Spirit Visage nerf 10% CDR, you might even just default go over to a Banshee's Veil if your champion does not have inherent regen or healing or whatever to benefit mm -hmm. from that passive. Yeah, because it gives more actual combat stats. It's a little bit more health, a little bit more um, Glitter MR. Lance, that's what he was blocking. Yep, blocked the Glitter Lance, pretty powerful there. McHale's Crucible, by the way, done uh, for Skyline support. These guys trading blows. Look how low this turret's getting Cocoon Lance on Kes. And look at it, it's NK doing the turret damage. Like I said, because <laughs> auto attack is so short that they're relying on the Elise to get the turret damage. And Jazzy going to happily tank the turret. They know this will go down in this fight, and so Cloud9 Tempest backs off. Not enough wave clear here. The push Big minion going. wave up top. Ooh, and that's going to be forced all tech to go defend that one. Look at this dive coming in. Jesse in the front line, taking the turret. The battle has begun. The spin coming across. A lot of damage coming in. Golden is going to pop the Zonius. Yuzuki forced backwards, pops the shield. And Kez, look at the damage up. It goes down. Impactful with huge damage there. All tech showing back up to defend the team. And Golden Blue now. Uh oh. Overextension by Gleeve Larbu goes down to Impactful. Bishu now forced away. This is going to be an inhibitor turret going down. Skyline 2 for 0 so far. And NK getting so fed by all that splitting that he was doing was actually really good because he could finish off the single target to get Golden Glue his reset. Beautiful stuff right here. Golden Glue, the forced away by a barrel. He's very injured. Yasuki holding the front line now, hexed away. And this is a low inhibitor, but these guys are taking damage on the way. Inhib goes down. Skyline, I don't know if they can stay for this. Yeah, they don't want to stay for this. They got two blinking red members. And they're going to have to recall to the dragon area as they ping down. So they successfully got their gold lead once again off of that Baron play. And they've got a nice open door into the base now. So won't be that much of a problem uh, even though they are lacking the range for sieging up. Well, this is looking pretty good for these guys. 2,000 gold. Putting Skyline in a pretty good spot. Tempest, a little bit calmer than I think they would like from their name. Kind of chilling, getting the wave clear still going, but haven't found any major openings in a while. Altex still grabbing gold on the split. When he gets Infinity Edge, he'll be a lot stronger right there, but the differences in AD carries is huge when one has an Eye Edge and one doesn't. It's, it's just massive. So the difference in AD carries is pretty big right now, but look at the difference in tanks. Like, it's a whole item extra here for Shivana. She's got a whole War Mox on, up on Renekton, and oh, Renekton yeah. is still doing his job. Oh, so yeah, he is. He's a 100 CS down even. Exactly. The tank differential not really having the big impact uh, because the AD carries, like you talked about, um, also have their little bit of discrepancy there. And we'll see what this NK Ink jungler can do. He's starting to build one more durability item that could be Banshees or Visage. At least does have some self-heal, but I can see it going either way just to not get Gragas ultied. He does have the uh, the life steal, but I think I like Banshees against this team because the Cloud9 team's got a lot of really good abilities to block. If you can block a Gragas, well, that's a whole bunch of damage you're not taking. As well as, you know, Vi never really wants to ult Elise because Elise can outplay it with a with a well-timed repel. Mm -hmm. But um, even so, he'll definitely not be a target with Banshees. Uh, not at all. So. The minion's still getting killed on all sides. Bottleman, of course, has the dead inhibitor. And Dragon's up in 14 seconds. Baron's up in a minute and a half. These could be objectives that Skyline waits for, or they might try to push in a little bit sooner when the Bottleman pushes into the base. We'll see what it ends up being. But I gotta point out that Impactful is huge. Finished Banshees. Infinity Edge is now done for all tech though. So these AD carries are similar damage, as all tech is more vulnerable to getting killed. The Ooh, only does no not. Stun. Yeah. We haven't really had a super crisp Leona ulti to start something off. No, really not. So unfortunate for Glebe not finding these. Only level 15 for him. A little bit lower than everyone else in this game. This guy's dodging around the CCs. Uh, Banshee does get popped from Impactful. He's got to be careful that he spell shields well now in this game. And the top turret is the area of focus there. Altec forced to the bottom lane to defend Ooh, his Nexus that's turret. Time for the dive. And it's going to be the dive. You guys keep jumping on the back line with Kez. What can Katarina do in this one? Looking for a damage. Finds Yazuki, forcing the flash away with Deathfire Grasp. The damage coming across to Kat. She's going to zone his away from this one and stay alive. NK Ink taking the turret down. Now Kez forced to run away. Still 5v5. But the damage coming across now from Gragas. Is he going to find enough? NK Ink dropping low. No! The Katarina reset! Can she find any more? Finds one, goes down. A second coming up from Impactful. 2-1 to one in this fight. And the inhibitor likely to go down. But Yazuki and Kez rejoin the fight. NK Ink forced to flash away. He's going to survive. 
Jezzy now on the run. Yazuki the Giant take. They do find the kill onto NK Inc. Jezzy low as well. Will he stay alive? Looks like yes. And re engages the fight. Now Kez getting slowed down. The damage from Sivir is gigantic, but they might trade front lines. Here comes Altec back into the fray. Gets slowed by Lulu in a 1v3 and forces them back. A 3 for 2, actually, plus inhibitor. Skyline getting that one. And the three-man Skyline squad does escape with their lives after that. Two inhibitors down. Really well done job. At this point, Cloud9 are thinking we're a little bit desperate. Baron is up, though, so there's a little bit of counterplay. Our no smite available means it would be a, a really, really desperate counter Baron, though. It would really be difficult, but we've seen crazy things happen in this game, to be fair. We have. Okay, so the bottom inhibitor is not actually down. Yeah. So they don't have to be as desperate as I thought. They can okay. still just defend here, wait for everyone to respawn, and go for another team fight. We saw in the last one, mm -hmm. they definitely have all their eyes on Katarina right there. Because not only did Bishu solo ulti Katarina, but they also then used the Assault and Battery right after on her. And she was able to Zanya's without any follow-up damage. So both those CCs, which are a big part of this team fight, mm -hmm. used on her without any follow-up damage. And that meant that... Uh, they were not able to secure her kill. Losing again, another objective. Oh, very well. Well played here by Skyline. That's going to be the raids going down. They're kind of taking every objective they can. Uh, putting some wards down and sweeping some away from Baron. Looks like this might be the target of their attention. Dragon being ignored right now. That gold seemingly not worth it for these guys. And Cloud9 Tempest easily sweeping away so the top lane minions. Remember how quick they killed Baron last time? Uh, they can do the exact same thing here. Elise has a Leandris and ridiculous percentage damage. Baron does go down. Jesse holding oh. on the front line, getting Lulu ult a gigantic health pool there. Stun on Evan Eskis, but no one cares about that. Hit up a little bit by Gragas. The fight has begun. Jesse still holding the front line. There is Sivir putting out so much damage. One's going to go down. Katarina getting the reset. It's going to be as Zonia's onto Bijou, trading one for one, two for one now. Big lead there for Skyline. Yuzuki has got nowhere to go. Altec versus Ed's going to be the kill for Altec, actually. Two for two in this fight. Guardian Angel from Yazuki. But it's Bishu going down. He went back in that fight a little bit too early. Yazuki running away for now, but it's still a five versus two on the map. This is so much room for Skyline to kind of push in and get more out of this game. Can they get anything else? Yeah, this should be a nexus for them. I don't know if Bishu recognized Impactful there. That's because he had a giant fairy on him. He walked a little too close. Well, here we go. There's the focus. In nexus down to half HP. They're just going for it. Impactful a bunch of pain. Lulu ulti. But he's going to go down for his troubles. No! It's going to be Altec falling down. The Jezzy's still trying to get away from Yazuki. And that is the nexus. Skyline 2-0 in Cloud9 Tempest. Wow. Have to give credit to the team fights of Skyline. Because both times... We counted them out because yeah. they're losing, losing early game, losing the turret game, and then they just bring it back in the team fights. Also, NK Inc. I'm pretty sure it was NK Inc.'s shot calling, but yeah, first he stole, he steals a Baron, then they get a pick and they call Jezzy back to go for the second Baron, which leads to uh, all the roller coaster of inhibitors that they were able to. Roll. And then the third one at the end too, leaving everyone there kind of just to look at them and and pick that one down. Very well played by Skyline. Great result by these guys. And now, of course, that's tonight's best of three. It's in our match history. It's been a